Welcome to Punchline Talks, politics. Today, my guest is Richard Graham, MP for Gloucester. Today, we're talking about the autumn statement. It just happened around an hour ago. Richard, thanks for joining us from Westminster. Good to see you again, sir. Good to see you, Mark. Always good to be on Punchline. Well, I personally thought it was a good day for business, but what was your takeouts from it? So I think you're absolutely right. That was one of the key goals of this autumn statement was to try and demonstrate that actually there were going to be a whole number of measures that the government could do to help business grow, deliver more jobs, get the tax revenues moving, and then eventually over time, you know, reduce the level of tax that everyone's paying. So in terms of the business announcements, um, there was obviously a whole flurry of stuff that was all around extending uh, the freeze on hospitality sector from business rates, which I think was important. Uh, that was worth 4.3 billion. Um, then there's the stuff on the uh, full expensing, which is the uh, certainly clad, if you like, in the clothes of being the biggest tax cut uh, for a very long time because they've made the super deduction permanent. So that's worth around 11 billion a year that especially benefits large scale manufacturers our multinationals if you like like Safran and some of the other uh, British owned companies as well in the region the engineers and so on but of course there's also a lot for smaller businesses um, and for uh, entrepreneurs the self-employed like my younger son like you um, because of the cuts on national insurance and for the self-employed that's all about getting rid of class two and reducing class four and for everybody else that's basically reducing uh, employee national insurance tax from 12 to 10 percent which is worth i think 450 quid a year increase in take-home pay that's that's a big sum so those i think were the, the headline figures big business cut through the super deductions being permanent big one for the self-employed um big one uh, then for every worker on national insurance. And of course, uh, a reiteration, a continuation of the cuts on business rates, um, which really affects uh, uh, SMEs. One other thing that was there, of course, and you'll remember this as a former chair of the FSB, very important campaign on uh, the speed of payment. And you'll have seen there was an announcement there about effectively reducing payment from bigger to smaller companies from 55 to 30 days over a period of time with some quite sharp penalties in there and some good news also for businesses who got planning applications in if it takes longer than it's supposed to then they get basically their their cost of planning refunded so a big stick to the councils to get a move on and make their decisions and i think those things together uh, amount to quite a lot of good news for business but you know, i did feel actually you know there's a lot of lobbying there was lots of noise beforehand coming from the business community and i actually think you know it did tick a lot of the boxes that the business community was screaming for you know the hospitality the leisure the leisure industry the drinks industry as well the, you know they're all big players here in gloucestershire and they, they would be on their knees you know it's tough out there yeah no absolutely no the hospitality and leisure sector very big in gloucestershire um, Mark uh, Harper always makes that point about the Forest of Dean, but it's not far off that for, for Gloucester as well. So, yeah, I think there's there's plenty in there. Like all of these things, it'll take a bit of time for people to sort of realise what it means, that you know soaking in process, which media, of course, has a big role to play in. Um, but the national insurance cuts will take effect very unusually with effect from the 6th of January. So... That's well, I'm glad, I'm glad you brought that up because let's be honest about it. That is just pure electioneering, isn't it? It's a, it's a, it's a. Um, well, let's let's just wave it along where 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 we're going, isn't it? We've got a, probably election at the end of 2024 or or October. I would imagine he takes it to its full term. It's a great way for the, the government to to get some money in people's pockets as quickly as it can. Yeah, no, I think a feel good factor is is always important uh, in in a year before a general election. But the key thing is that a year ago, we couldn't have done this. That's mm -hmm. the key thing. This is fully backed by the Office of Budget Responsibility saying, that actually, look, you've been able to do these things because your debt is falling, your borrowing is falling, your growth is higher than expected. And so you've got this headwind of around 25, 30 billion that you can deploy if you deploy it in ways that will increase productivity, generate more jobs, reduce the benefit payments, add to the economy 
and then the figures add up. And that is the crucial thing. You've got to be able to show that you're still reducing debt as a percentage of GDP. Do you ever get really annoyed with this sort of national media? I mean, I straight away on Sky News and the BBC, I was flicking between the channels, and they always seem to find the negative and everything. And I was thinking, come on now, some of it is looking quite good. But it was like, yeah, it was it was just trying to pull everything apart. Does that is that frustrating to you and to the rest of the party, to the other MPs trying to trying to get the job done? Well, it can be. I mean, it's not unique to us. You know, I think it's going to happen to any government, any council that's in power. You're going to have people rightly who are holding you to account, who are scrutinizing you, who are going to want to find the things that aren't quite right, aren't perfect, need improving, because there's always more to do. And so I think, you know, we expect a certain amount of that. I did say to the BBC earlier, I was just talking on their their regional TV, uh, I did say to them that, look, the phrase cost of living crisis has been seriously overused. If you want a crisis, you need look no further than Ukraine or Gaza. That is a real crisis. Mm -hmm. What we've had with the cost of living has been an increase in costs, food, inflation, fuel, inflation, energy, inflation, you name it, which has been very painful for some people but actually has been mitigated by the government giving people quite a lot of money for their heating. Fuel prices have come down. Food inflation is still tiresome, but a lot lower than it was. And overall inflation is now less than half what it was. So, you know, to go on using the word crisis is absolutely, in my view, not the right word. And so media sometimes does lag a bit behind seeing the turnaround, the uptick, that things are getting better. Um, this can be true for businesses as well. You know, business analysts always have to project out 12, 18 months. And I think our job as representatives of the community is always to, on the one hand, highlight the challenges that our constituents or our constituent businesses have got and try and lobby and campaign for improvements, things the government could do to help them, while on the other hand, also talking about what's actually improved and got better already uh, and make sure that people understand there is often a balance in these things. And personally, I think when you look around Gloucester today, you look at the latest levelling up fund announcements for Eastgate and Greyfriars, you look at that, you look what's happening, you can see it so visibly now at the Forum with the new buildings, the first four-star hotel, and so on, the underpass at the railway station where work moves ahead. And I think, you know, hopefully quite a lot of people will be feeling, yes, actually, there are some really good changes happening, which are making Gloucester a better place. And now, with a little bit more money in my pocket to spend from these national insurance cuts, you know, I can get there out there and enjoy it a bit more. That's what I, I hope people will feel. But I recognise, obviously, other people will have a different narrative to tell. Now, G First LEP has uh, announced today the uh, in the Gloucester Council meeting that that seems to be not... Oh, it's it's a, it's not finishing, but it's evolving. What's your general thoughts on that? I think you know the local enterprise partnerships were created to give business a voice in decisions on public spending, and I think that was a really good thing. You know, I remember lobbying very hard, for example, to get the Blackfriars redevelopment done. That's resulted in that uh, new and I think rather good university accommodation there, Hartbury and the Uni of Gloss Blackfriars, looking very different to what it was ten years ago. Um, and, and I think that was helpful to have the voice of business in there. But I think it's also true that the LEPs over a period of time did build up quite a cost base so that government money was being filtered through uh, a system which was filtering off, if you like, quite a lot of cost to pay for its own staff. And I guess that's why government has decided, let's get the money straight into the county councils encourage the county councils to create a business advisory committee, which I think is what's happening with Gloucestershire. Lots of the same people, Ruth Dooley will still be there, David Owen is involved as a, an employee of the council now, and hopefully we will still get some really good thinking from the voice of business so that we do the right things to grow the sectors where we have a competitive edge, cyber, AI, nuclear, aerospace, you know, you name it. Now, I'm just going to bring it back down to the, the autumn statement again. I just had an email from the GMB union, actually. I just uh, a bit of balance here. It says uh, here, working people won't forgive and forget who trashed the county, the country's economy, says the GMB. GMB union has responded. He says, uh, this is Gary Smith, general secretary, said, today's measures go nowhere near fixing the damage this conservative government has done to people's finances. The cut to NI will mean just over 150 a year to the lowest paid, a drop in the ocean when mortgages are doubled and energy bills are crippling household financials, finances. 
working people aren't fooled or won't be forgiven or forgot who trashed the country's economy. Yeah, and you know, you would expect GMB Union as a solid supporter of the Labour Party to be very much promoting that line. But I think actually what some of the lower paid will really be thinking is that the minimum uh, wage, the, the national living wage is going up to uh, over 11 pounds, 11.44 an hour, that's plus 9%. That's worth an additional 1800 pounds for a full-time worker every year. And that also means, interestingly, that actually the, the sort of lowest paid will be eliminated as a statistical entity because the definition of the sort of the lowest paid is less than two thirds of the median wage. And this will mean that actually they will be up to two thirds of the median wage. So this is a huge leap forward for some of the lowest paid uh, in our constituencies in Gloucester and around the county. So I think it is a real opportunity for many people to get more cash in hand. It'll encourage more people, I hope, back into work. There are a million jobs that still haven't been filled around the country. And GMB actually should be pleased if more people come back into work and see the, the benefits of, of both of working for themselves and their families. But that also helps grow the economy. And it's that way that all the unions will see more opportunities for their members. So. I think there is another way of looking at this, and I very much see the glass as half full and getting more full, uh, whereas obviously if you're on the, the other party's point of view, you you very much want to see it as half empty and probably getting emptier. Now, on the other side of uh, getting people into work, there was an interesting thing about employees with disabilities, uh, the sort of health system and uh, cutting benefits for the long term um, sick if they didn't get into work. Um, what what do you what do you think of those Sort of, it seems sort of quite heavy-handed, you know, big, big stick. I mean, is is the is there such a big problem here with 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 people with disabilities? So I think the figures, Mark, were that you know at the moment we've got you know a, a million jobs that are unfilled, and a million people capable of work who are not currently working. So although the two will never match, nonetheless, there's a huge opportunity, and I think the OBR, the independent sort of body are saying that we could get another 700,000 people back into work over the next two or three years. Um, so that if we produce the money, and I think 1.3 billion is going into this to help uh, job coaches work with people who are out of work to give them the skills and give them the confidence and get them into the interviews to help them land a job, um, then that will be really good for them. But if after sort of 18 months of turning down job interviews, not wanting to work and so on, you've got an able-bodied person who is still refusing to work, then I think the stick in there, after all the carrots and the increased wages and so on, the stick is to say, look, you will have to do some mandatory work provision if all else fails. And I think for people who are working in many cases in Gloucester, very hard for not a huge amount of money, they want to see that there is not an alternative lifestyle available there for their neighbours, where people can sit on benefits, not doing any work, and still earning almost as much as the person next door who is. So I think this is about rewarding work, making sure that work always pays, and that people who are working hard don't see their neighbours doing very little and still being comfortable. And I think, I think that is an important message for people who are paying tax. Richard Graham. Thanks ever so much for joining us today. Great to see you, sir. Thank you. Thanks Thank for joining Punchline Talks. Bye.